Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. My name is Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now this next pattern in the Great Smoky Mountain series is called Corey's Calf Tail. Now a lot of folks think this has always been a Smoky Mountain pattern, when in reality, the Corey in the name was Ralph Corey, who lived on the Muscogon in Southern Michigan, who took it over to New York to the Ossible and the Beaver Kill in the late 1920s. Brought it down to Western North Carolina and Tennessee, and it has been a popular fly in the Smoky Mountains for the last 90 years. So for all practical purposes, this is a Smoky Mountain fly. Now it's a pretty easy pattern to tie. It's got a little bit of white calf tail for the tail and calf tail for an upright divided wing, which makes it a high floater and a highly visible fly for some of us folks who need a highly visible fly to see more than 50 feet out. It's a pretty easy fly to tie. It's pretty cool looking. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. There it is in the vise, Corey's calf tail. I'm gonna be tying this on a size 12. It's a standard length barbless dry fly hook. I'm using brown 70 denier UTC. I'll put a little base, not all the way back yet, no need to but just leave my thread hanging where I'm gonna post the calf tail, maybe a third of the way back. We're a little farther back than that, how about right there? Now one of the cool things about this pattern is you don't have to stack the calf tail. So take a fair size clump, and you might want to pull some of the under the short hairs out of the bottom but we're not stacking it and we're not really worried about the length because this, this is one of the few that we will actually trim. So a couple of wraps to get it caught in right there. Check, make sure you're still coming off the top. I think we are. Now a few tight wraps to really lock it in here. Now before we stand it up, you'll want to pull this up at about a 30 or 45 degree angle Put your scissors parallel to the hook, and cut it off short. Now why you do that is that will get you a better taper going back. So medium to loose wraps, or medium to tight wraps back here. And there we've got a little bit of a taper. Now take some more calf tail. Not quite as much this time. And since I'm not stacking it, I will just take my piece and then pull out with my fingers any really long ones. And that's about what I want right there. Maybe a hook gap in length. So we'll go ahead and catch this in with a couple wraps and check your position. I think that's gonna be fine right there. So let's go ahead and secure this in with some tighter wraps. And we can do the same thing we did on the front calf tail with the back. Just grab this, cut it at a slight angle, and that might help you get a taper to fill in any gap between the front part and the back part. So we're fairly level right there. I've got a little dip right here so I can throw a few more wraps in. but I think our dubbing is going to cover any, any deep gaps we have. So take your thread back up to the front. Let's stack this calf tail upright, depending on what size thread you're using. This is a 70 denier, it's pretty thin stuff, so it's gonna take several wraps to get it standing upright. So there it is. Now, you don't have to split it. I usually do. I think it looks just a little bit better. So try to split it with your fingers, just about half and half. Now put an X wrap through it, figure eight wrap. So I've got them split right there. Well, that one came off, so I'm gonna do that again. Okay, now I've got two X wraps in it and the wings are split. So let's take our thread back to the tail and we'll tie in the hackle. Now this pattern, it's just a brown hackle, brown dry fly hackle. 
I got a little bit crazy. I even tied it with some yellow, some dyed yellow hackle, and it looked kind of cool. But for this demonstration, I am doing the original. So it's going to be a yellowish tan underbody and a brown hackle. So after you catch that in, I'm going to just bury this tip instead of cutting it. Take a thread back almost to where we're going to start the body. Put some wax on it. And I am using a yellow superfine. So any synthetic dubbing works well on this one. And it's not going to take too much. If you look at it, we don't have a long body there because that calf tail is about a, you know, a third of the way down the hook. So I've got probably more dubbing than I need on right here, but we can pull some of that off in just a minute. If needed, I might be able to use all of this without it getting too bulky on me. Okay, I was able to, that's fine right there. But before we start wrapping this hackle, let's get our, our thread up to the very front where we're going to finish the fly. Now we wrap this brown dry fly hackle. Now the first four wraps are gonna be fairly well spaced. It's just palmered up. So, see how we're palmering this up and before we get to the wing, we will put about three or four wraps on top of each other right behind the wing and we'll do the same thing in front of it. So it's sparsely hackled from the back up to the front and then it's pretty thickly hackled up here. So you can pull your wings forward and put several wraps up here almost right on top of each other. I wasn't counting, I don't know how many that is. That's probably four up front. Let's go ahead and do one more. I think we can get away with that. Now let's catch off this. A couple of wraps should work here. And I'm gonna go ahead and push this back to start my head before I snip off that excess hackle right there. And if you have some poke forward, you might have to trim them. I've got a few right here that I'm gonna have to trim. No big deal. Could probably get away without trimming them. You could still get your tippet through this eye. But let's try to make it pretty. Okay, now we can snip off this excess feather right here. And I think we can whip finish it right now. Maybe push a couple of these up. And we have one more step after this, so don't go anywhere just yet. We're going to trim this calf tail. Now I'll show you. See right now that's so long it's coming off the top of the, the screen. But you'll want to trim it a little bit longer than your the brown hackle just to keep it visible and it will look pretty good like that so there's my wings still split and just a little bit longer than the hackle and that's it Corey's calf tail a very buoyant very easy to see pattern pretty cool pretty easy to tie so thanks for watching folks i really appreciate it and we'll see you next time